All right, guys, let's talk about how to make sure the photos we put in the yearbook are awesome, both when we're taking them and when we're choosing which ones to put in the yearbook. So it's actually pretty simple to remember what makes a great yearbook photo. The acronym is FACE. F stands for face and the ball if it's a sporting event, which doesn't have an F in it. Uh, A stands for angles and action, action being the more important one. C stands for getting in close, and I need to fix this to also be close. And contrast. Sorry about that. And E stands for energy, excitement, and emotion. Those are the things we're looking for to make for a great yearbook photo. So let's go through and talk about each one. Unless there's a really good reason, we always want to see a face in our photos. And if it's a sporting event, we also want to see a ball. So look at this page right here. Every single photo, you can see the face of every person in the photo. With one exception, you've got this dude right here who's turned slightly away. But that's part of the photo. She's talking to him and they're doing a thing together. So it kind of almost makes sense. And then in this photo, she's turned away just a tiny bit, but enough that we can see her. So... We always want to see faces. If you can't see a face, you better have a dang good reason why not. Let's look at this page right here. Here's a sporting photo, right? A football photo or a football page. Notice faces in every single photo with one exception. And it's this one right here. And the reason why is because he's jumped up and he's got his head tilted back to grab the ball. So that's okay. That's a really good reason to not have the face because he's trying to get up and get the ball. You'll notice that anytime there is a ball that's appropriate for the photo, that there should be a ball in the photo, we can see it. Ball, 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 ball. You get the idea. So we always want to show the face, and we always want to show the ball. If you can't see the face or the face is hidden, don't use the photo. Action or angles. Photos that tell great stories usually show action. Um, we'll sh let me demonstrate that in just a second, but let's talk about angles. We can't always show action in our photos because there's not always something going on. Sometimes kids are just sitting and doing something. So when we can't show action, we at least want to shoot from an interesting angle. Think about it. Everyone already sees the world from about between five and six feet off the ground because that's how tall most of us are. So if we're just showing people in our photos, things from that same perspective, we're kind of showing them in a way that's already been seen. So we should always be looking for unique angles to take photos. And sometimes that means we put the camera down on the ground. Sometimes it means we climb up high and look down. Let me show you. Uh, so here's some great action photos, uh, two great action photos, and one really bad one. So think about writing the caption for this photo or this photo. That's going to be really simple. Now think about having to write the caption for this photo. What are you going to say? So-and-so sits and writes. You know, it's just there's no action there. There's nothing exciting happening. Uh, but this one has great action in it, and this one has great action in it as well. So this is why we want action in our photos, because they tell such a better story, and they're so much easier to write our captions for. Here's two different angles that you can use. Um, this one is the camera is down low. This, this young person is up on the stage. And the camera is looking up at them. That's what we want to see. That's what we want in our photos. We want interesting angles. And sometimes that interesting angle just means we're way off to the side. So instead of shooting directly into our subject like we might normally do, we get way off to the side and shoot down the line. And then we get this girl in focus and this guy is out of focus and everybody else is out of focus. And we end up with this really cool photograph. So that's what I mean by angles. Okay. Close or contrast. One of the biggest mistakes new photographers make is they don't get close enough. So getting close is easy. Just get closer than you think you need to. Now, contrast is a little bit harder to see. Contrast is when toe things, two things are together that aren't normally together. You'll know when you see it because it'll jump out and slap you. You'll be like, whoa, I got it. I got it. I'm not going to show you close because close is just literally getting closer. But here's two great examples of contrast and see how much more interesting these photos are because of the contrast. We don't normally see a girl in her homecoming dress playing the tuba, but due to a series of unforeseen events that happened at a marching band thing last year. We don't normally see wrestlers with full face masks on like this. And that's kind of cool looking. So we have contrast here and that really makes things interesting. Okay emotion, energy, and excitement. These are all kind of the same thing, and I'm going to tell you right now, having these immediately makes your photo better. This is what we're looking for, emotion and energy and excitement. This is what we want in our yearbook photos. Here's three great examples of this. Imagine all three of these photos, and the person is not laughing or screaming or having a good time, and they're just sitting there with a straight face. 
all three of these photos become not terrible, but way less interesting when we take the emotion, the energy, and the excitement out of them. But all three of them have a really strong feeling of that, and all three of them makes it really, all three are really good photos, and they're gonna be really easy to write captions for. The best photos combine all three, or excuse me, all four things. We can see a face in a ball. It's in, uh, it's got an action or an interesting angle. It's in close and not necessarily has contrast, but it's got one of the C's and it's got some energy or excitement or emotion. So look at this. We're in close. We can see the face of the ball. He's going in for a layup. That's our action. And his emotion is that he's intense. Look how intense his face is. Okay. Here we've got action. He's pouring rice from one of the cup into his hands. We've got emotion. They're laughing and having a good time. We've got faces. We're in close. And then look at this photo. Love this photo. We've got action. The puppy's licking him on the nose. We've got emotion. He's laughing because he's getting licked. We've got a face. We're in close. Love it. These are all great photos and all super easy to write captions for. The worst photos have only one or two of these things. So think about this. This has faces, so we're in, we have faces, we're in close, but there's no action. Well, there is action. What's the action? They're holding their thumbs up. <laughs> Lame. Okay. There's is emotion. What's the emotion? They're smiling. What in the world are you gonna write a caption about in this photo? Holding their thumbs up while smiling. Jada, so and so and so and so hold their thumbs up and smile. They're not doing anything. Ah, these are the worst kind of photos. Posed photos where they're looking at the camera are the worst, and they got no business being in the yearbook. Do not use them. Okay. You guys, that's it. That's the strategy. That's how we get good photos. We look for the FACE acronym, and the F in FACE stands for FACE. That's pretty easy to remember. The A stands for action or angles. The C stands for close or contrast or both. And the E stands for emotion, energy, and excitement. You get all four of those, and you've got an amazing yearbook photo. Ideally, you want at least three of them to make for a great photo. Four is ideal. Two or less means throw it away. We don't want it. All right, now you know how to pick out photos, how to take photos, and how to pick out photos to put in the yearbook.